All right, welcome back to Hood Ridge Racing. So right now we're actually headed up to a uh, pick and pull, a junkyard up north. It's about an hour and 25-ish minute drive. Just got off work, uh, decided to go after work because it's two and a half hours from my house. So anyway, we're gonna be going up there because there is uh, a few Harvard blue four doors up in that drunk area, which is really like unheard of. I've never seen so many blue four doors. I gotta get some parts. Um, when I get there, I'll show you guys what I'm getting. And it's much needed parts for the four door at home. So it just looks like shit right now. And I'm just tired of seeing it all, all messed up. Right now I am in the daily. Uh, it's a lot more comfortable. When you guys have a race car, you're building a race car, go to get yourself a daily because of the and the gas that EG takes, the amount of times I change the spark plugs on it, the oil changes and all that stuff. It's just it could be a rough ride. But anyway, we're headed up there right now and I will catch you guys uh, when we get up there. Alright, so we just got here and it's dumping rain out, which really sucks. But we're at the pick and pull. Um, up in Arlington. Okay, get my ass out there in the rain and find a door. Uh, two fenders, corner lights. Can't believe I drove an hour and a half for some EG parts, but that's how hard these parts are getting to find, dude. Wish I had property and just can buy a bunch of EGs and store them. Anyway, so let's get out there and see what they have. That's the reason we're here, because they have three blue four-doors. Here's one of them. See the good old rain. Good old Washington bow shit. Here for both fenders. This one's all no good. Corner light, good tab. Oh uh, yeah. I think. Yep. Most importantly, I need this fender, dude. Let's get it. It's mint and the door. Look at that. Color. Oh shit. Where's it say blue? Blue. 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 Done with this one. I'm gonna go to the next one now. All right. Dude, so I found another one right behind me. Yeehaw, buddy. Dust color, but the door has been repainted and the passenger fender's all smashed up. So on to the next one. Final stop. Door's been Wolverine, can't use that. And of course, front end's all gone. Uh, yep. So back to the first EG. Of course, this door is straight as an arrow, and you got a little bit of peeling going on, which sucks, dude. And the back door, which is all chewed up right here, paints mint, of course. Send me Harvard Blue parts, please. It's actually really it could be handy for someone who has manual doors. That's cool. It's automatic. Nice and moldy, the way we like it. So in case you guys don't know, uh, we're at the drunk yard and they have four doors here, but they have, the only four doors they have are blue, which is pretty amazing. I was able to snag the fender off this one. It's like super clean, I got lucky. Because the passenger fender is the one I don't really need as much. Boom, which sucks. And I got the passenger corner light though, but I need the driver one, I need both. Ah, smells like ass. I'm like in awe right now, dude. I can like stare at this color all day, even it's pouring down on my head. Ah, I get all Washington bullshit. We're about to head out. I don't know what else to get from here. Um, I got what I really, really needed and was the driver's side fender. So let's just get out of here. Damn, dude. I'm trying to get this door and forgot to take the pin out. I took the bolts out first and dude, I drop the door damn it nuts actually get out of here yeah all right we're headed back home it's about a two to two and a half hour drive uh so i said take that door off it was straight as an arrow but the the clear coat was stripping um i would have been more pissed if the clear coat door was mint we got off we got to take the little pin out that goes on the, the little door stop and uh, i already had unbolted it and i Knocked the pin, was hitting it, and didn't expect it to come out that easy and end up dropping the door and bending a corner, which kind of hurt a little, to be honest with you. 
um, yeah, it was actually pretty successful. I did pick up that fender that I really needed and just stoked, dude. Stoked I found that because now the car won't look like shit anymore. And I probably won't be taking a correction wrench to this fender anytime soon. So, um, got the sweet comb over. If you guys live in the Western Washington area, go ahead and, um, comment and let me know, dude. I'm always looking for, um, uh, EG parts in general, uh, but mainly, mainly comment or get a hold of me somehow. I'll put a little Instagram right here. Um, yeah, go ahead and message me, get a hold of me. If you have Harbor Blue parts, and I'm talking like nice straight parts. Yeah, I swear, if I get rear-ended in this car, and my daily is probably worth a lot more than my EG. With that fender in the back, I'm gonna kill someone. I'm probably gonna be more worried about that fender than the rest of my newer Civic. God, this color, man, it's so cursed. I love the color, but it's so hard to find stuff for it, you know what I'm saying? So like in every video, I have some, uh, some like tips. Uh, some things that I've discovered just throughout the years. Back in my day, man, it feels so weird saying that, but back when I used to go to drunk yards about, about 12 years ago, 11 years ago, there was obviously like just a huge inventory of old Hondas. And they were not as old as they are now, obviously. Kind of like, you know, kind of like me. I'm not even that old. But anyway, a few things you learn is um, <clears throat> when you're looking for parts and the part on the car is missing, Go, the cars that are surrounding it, go look in them because people do tend to hide parts. I've There's been only a couple times where I found the parts in another vehicle, but people hide them because they don't have the money on them right now or they're going to come back with the money or whatever, you know? So, so a little advice when you're looking for parts, look in the cars around it, look inside the car, look in the trunk, look underneath it. These junkyard runs are getting more and more of a, you know, to me, like more of a chore because... I know that when I get to these junk yards, I'm probably not going to find what I'm looking for anymore. Or if I do, these EDs are so damn old that the parts damaged or the paint is faded. I stopped buying panels, body panels actually, a long time ago. This is kind of like one of those, um, I'm desperate, you know, help, I need Harvard blue parts. Uh, but yeah, that was kind of a desperate and it seriously paid out because I will show you guys a fender when I get home. I'll give you a little more closer look, but it's, it's mint man like i've never seen a junkyard fender look so good and it's the same color like you just that just does not happen so i had to snag that of course uh, yeah uh two hours 15 minutes from now i'll be at home all right so it is the next day i got home really late because it's a two-hour drive uh but i pretty much have my tools all laid out down here letting them dry and um, we got that they got pretty wet yesterday so, let me show you guys the fender before. So it's really crushed up. I'm having issues with the front end lining up. So you can see it's rubbing right here because it's smashed in. It's pushed a bumper uh, to the tire. It's just all messed up. So we're gonna go ahead and throw that new fender on, which is right there. Uh, I'm gonna throw it on, get everything all fitted, and then gonna wash the car probably later. So I'm gonna pull the car out, get some better lighting, and we'll throw this fender on. So we just got the side skirt off. Uh, surprisingly, it had all its clips on the bottom. So back these out. What you're gonna wanna do without damaging these clips, I uh, took a rubber mallet and just hit it forward that way. And you can get it to slide out from these little retaining spots. So this was a fender we picked up from the junkyard. yard. Super straight, not a single dent on it. It's pretty amazing. Paint super clean. Obviously needs to be washed, uh, buffed. Maybe some hit it with some lacquer real quick along these spots. This is a fender I just took off. You can see it's smashed right there from the door kitchen, door cut, but mainly right there. Yep, it's one of my episodes I had. Anyway, along with the fender, got a corner light, OEM corner light for the passenger side, which I'm missing the lens, so that's good. Good find. Uh, just a slave cylinder boot and this little AC delete plate. That was a cool piece. I don't know if I'm going to put it on the car, but it would be cool to have. So let's get that fender on. Your shot back.
Right, so a week later, we're gonna continue this video. Uh, basically got back from the junk yard last weekend and um, just got some stuff organized around the house and I have a bunch of drywall finishing that I had to do in my house. I've just been super busy, uh, just nonstop. Uh, had holes in my walls I had to patch up and big holes from the plumbers when I had my house pre-pipe. But anyway, um, I will show you guys a new fender. It's on. I went ahead and lacquered it. Got all the chalk off the fender. It's actually, you can kind of see how clean this fender is. I can't believe this is in the junkyard. But got all the chalk off with some lacquer. I washed it first. Yeah, I actually just washed it yesterday. Yeah, for once, it just looks really nice outside. And... Um, it's basically, just give it a nice wash. I mean, the hood gets all messed up from, you know, from the exhaust. Um, everything, I mean, it gets everywhere. It gets on the windshield, it does get on the fenders. You can kind of see a little bit of staining on the wiper arm. But yeah, I'm really happy with how this fender looks. I mean, the car looks actually really good with this fender. You guys saw what it looked like before I ended up replacing this. It was just completely just caved in right here from me getting pissed at it and hitting it with vice grips and kicking it in. But before we get into, you know, a little bit of outside, I'll take the car out and kind of show you guys a walk around. Uh, before I get into that, I'm having another problem with this car and I'll pop it open and show you guys what's going on with it. Never ending party over here. Like I said, the fun never stops. So you can see we got a crack on this runner right here. I'll give you guys a little zoom. You can see that. But we also have a crack on this runner. Can't really get my hand around, but you get the idea. It's right there somewhere. Um, Got to take everything apart. Got to take the oil lines out, obviously. Remove the manifold. And I got to take it to a buddy. Yeah, his dad's a welder. So his dad's a welder. He's been welding for like 15, 20 years, something like that. Um, and he also had a TIG wall, and they've got all the equipment at their house. And I'm really uh, fortunate that I happen to have someone that can help me out in this situation. So we're going to take that off, because a lot of other shops have got a long wait time if I can even get in. So I'm going to go in and take it off and take it over and get it repaired sometime this weekend, throw it back on the car, and enjoy it. So let's get to it. I'm going to take it off, probably do it off camera. Um, it's kind of a, you know kind of monotonous it's kind of just a boring thing to watch right i'm just gonna take my turbo off i will load it up in the car and we will get out of here i just got the feet off that was a 916 and we got the drain off the pan right there put some tape around the fitting just threw some tape around the uh, an fitting so it doesn't scratch up because i like to do it the getaway this up pipe is kind of stuck on there. And I got the V-band loose. Uh, time for my little rubber mallet. Hit it with that, see what happens. Dude, what is going on? Damn. Oh, got the dipstick. There we go. I have no clue what that was about, but it worked. All right, there she is. We got it all up and one of these nuts uh, I dropped into the into this stupid ass thing because I had this off because I was catching oil, so I had to move this thing and dump it in those containers so I can filter through the oil and find the nut. Like you know, wonder why the universe works like that, but this is, this is how it goes, I guess. But yeah, now we got a mess to clean up, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean that up. If I do that. Let me show you guys the turbo. Uh, hasn't been off the car since got the car running. So I got everything all laid out right here. Um, so that's kind of kind of a problem. It was rubbing right there on the manifold, but got it off and it's gonna take out one more nut. This is a Precision 6266 ball bearing, Gen 2, and a Turbo Smart 60 mil wastegate. Um, so this cracked, and if you guys remember another video, my wastegate dump cracked. I'm like, whatever, you know. Um, but now, 
We've got two cracks on the manifold, one right there, one right there. Ah, <sighs> get cheapy race, they said. It'll be cool. It'll be good quality, they said. Kind of disappointed, dude. Like, if you guys have any, like, comments or, you know, suggestions, go ahead and throw them in the comments. Um, I don't know why this manifold cracked. Wasn't super old when I got it. It was used, but everything looked really clean and on the newer side. I do have the intercooler mounted properly. It has two brackets on each side. Uh, I'm sure you guys seen in my videos or thumbnails or whatever, you know. So, because I was told if you don't have anything mounted, which makes sense. You got a lot of weight on the on the manifold and it can cause it to crack. But that's been mounted ever since I put the turbo on. So, from the comments, uh, maybe it was just a shitty welds. Uh, it was welded and in terrible conditions. I'm not too sure. That was a notification. Just swipe it. Uh, but yeah, from the comments. But I'm going to go and clean this mess up. We're going to head out and get this turbo manifold repaired. Get it all cleaned up now. It's dripping from that damn thing. I'm gonna be losing all my oil here. Dude, that was so much oil. Now I gotta do an oil change in addition to getting this manifold fixed. Kinda needed it anyway, but whatever. Uh, more money, I guess. It's been a while since I put any kind of money into this car. Turbo was like stuck on there. Something's not lined up, so. Sometimes that's how I feel with the sheep erase garbage. Uh, got it off. We're gonna take it. Hopefully get these shit welds fixed. All right, we're headed to uh, Cornelius. Cornelius house again. Sun's out, weather's nice, it's Friday. There's a car meet down the street from my house and my car's broken. It's, it's one of those things to do. Like I said earlier, it's just how the universe works. It's trying to screw me over. Guess how much it weighs? The manifold, top mount. 19.2 pounds. That's pretty light. Just to recap, you got a crack right here. That one's about to shit the bed. Crack right there. And that one's not a crack, but it's a shitty weld. I need your assistance. Nope. You're on your own. So yeah. All you. <laughs> Are we gonna weld all of them, right? Nope. No? I ain't gonna weld anything. I'm just gonna take this. See, it's already on the garbage can. All I need to do is open the lid and put it in. Oh, I, <laughs> I was about to throw, I was actually about to throw it, but I'm just joking. I honestly just want a new manifold. That's surprising.